Hey what's up, my name is Grace and in this video we are going to go ahead and set up context API with our React Native app. So initially what we did is create a file folder called context where we put our context related files. One of them was, was actions. Now in actions we are going to be having basically the, the functions that are going to be doing something and then those functions are going to be maybe dispatching some type. So what context allows us to do is be able to, to have a global state of the, on, in the application and also a way to change that state. So it does that by using two hooks. One is create context and also the, another one is use reducer. So to put it to use here, we have this component here, the one we want to create. So this component is going to be responsible for creating that global state and also passing that global state to the other sections of the application. So here, instead of us returning now, I'm going to create a component. So this is going to be global provider. So this is going to be a high order component. So that's going to be taking in children and then it's going to be returning something and then passing it to those children. So here we can have a return. So it's going to be, in, it's going to need to return a context provider component. So for us to create a context provider component, we need something called create context. So over here, I'm going to import react and then create context from react. So here, for us to create the context, we can say const global context equals create context. Okay, so that gives us the context. So it needs a default value. So I'm gonna pass a default object there, an empty object by default. So here, we need to return this component. So we can have return global context. Then we want to call provider. So when you call provider, now we can pass everything that this gives us. So let's pass the children down to everything that this gives us. Now, the most important thing we are going to need here is the value of the state at any point in time. So for us here, we need to pass value like this. So the value is going to be an object, of course. Now it can be an object that contains any kind of state, either complex or not. It's going to be in here. But for us to be able to know what to change, we need to actually have what to change. So if you think of it, we are going to mostly be working with authentication state and also the contact state. So here we are going to be working with user reducer now because user reducer, like we said, gives us a way to create state and a way to change the state. So let's import use reducer. Now here we can call use reducer. So use reducer. So what user reducer does is it takes in the reducer of which the reducer is like a function that we can that you're going to be using to change state and also the initial state we want to change. I'm going to create a simple reducer here called auth reducer. So also we are, it takes in the reducer and also the, the initial state of that reducer. So what that does is it gives us two things so we can destructure them out. So I'm going to do some array destructuring here. Uh, it's going to be equal to that. Then it's going to give us the auth state and also the auth dispatch function. So it gives us two things. One is the current state in time. Another one is the function that we can dispatch and we change what is defined here. So let's create the reducer. Now here we have reducers. I'm going to go in and create a file, a file called uh, auth.js. So a reducer is a function that determines what previous state we had and what it should change to after something happens. So here I'm going to create a function called auth. So like we said, it has to take in state and something called an action. Now here, let's export it. So export default auth. Okay, so here we are going to be dispatching different types. So for the most part, those types are going to be coming here in actions. So let's destructure them out and also payload. So these are the common things you're going to be working with. So you define a type and then the payload. Now here you have Basically, a, a switch statement that will be running to know what exactly that uh, you want it to do. So for us to define what we want to do, we're going to be dispatching a type. So that's what we want to switch. So yeah, let's say we are doing something like login. Then we can do something. We can say maybe return empty. So default, we can return the previous state like this but you're going to be coming and doing this one to mean what we'll be up to right now we are just setting it up so it's also return state here so we don't accidentally crash our app so here now we have our reducer let me just bring in auth here make sure we can import it properly so auth 
okay then the initial state instead of us having empty here let's create an initial state inside our initial states folder so here we can have auth.js then we can have an export default object like this so we can have things like is logged in it can be false by default and you can have let's say the user himself so for the user i'm going to have a data there if there are any auth errors we can have like errors error it's going to be null by default not false okay so if you are loading like the loading state then you can have it like that okay so now we can bring auth let me change this auth state so here we can now have auth state make sure it's imported properly okay so also let's do the same thing for the contacts just do contacts contacts we need to create this so i'm gonna go to reducers and also deprecate it it's gonna be contacts so here let's rename this contacts okay i said get contacts mm -hmm. so we have this now let's make sure that we have an import for this from reducers then this should be from the initial state we haven't really created it let's go create it or oh, this shouldn't be like this so here where we have auth state i'm going to now change this because we don't want it to have the same name so let's make sure we have an input there auth state okay so let's create the contact state contact initial state so i will duplicate it then change this to contacts initial state okay so here we're going to be having different things for example we're going to be having the st like state for getting contacts so this is going to be an object in there let's remove his logged in it's not necessary then we can have let's say create contact create okay then let's say we have delete contact we need to track all those states and also have it there okay we're going to be adding more if we need to now if we come back here let's make sure we are importing contact initial state contacts initial state let's see support it okay looking good okay so let's also rename this to initial state initial con both both initial state now since it's a default export we don't really need to change here that's gonna do so our auth reducer so we change this to auth state okay like this and now things look good to me so now we need to return all this stuff in the value so here we can come and return an object shouldn't be an array so let's return an object that contains everything in there so it's gonna contain the auth state the contact state and also our dispatch function so that would be the auth dispatch and also and also the the contacts dispatch okay like that so all this stuff is going to be accessible in other children components the one that we are going to be wrapping down here so for us to wrap that we need a way to export this so let's export it to so export default global provider now if we go to our app.js we are going to be wrapping everything here inside global.provider so let's do global.provider and then the app container or our routes can go in there so let's move them there also i'm going to import it then let's create this format this one properly let's clean it up a bit also we don't need this okay so looking good so now that we have defined our provider component we have our initial states in there now instead if we go to our navigations which is here the home 
instead of us having something like this, let's select the is logged in file from the context. So to work with the, for us to know what's in the context, we're going to need to use a hook called use context. So let's have use context. Okay. So for us to know what's in the context, we can create maybe some state. Then we say use context. So when you say use context, you want to give it the context you want to you to check. Now here in the provider, remember we have the global context that we defined here and then we define the provider. So this is what we're going to be using to access the values here. So we want to export it to so export const equals create create context and then remember we attach the value here and then return it as the provider component. So now for us to check what's in the context, we say use context and then we can say global context here. Global context. Need to make sure we're importing it. Okay, like that. So now if we do a console log for the state here, let's do a console log. Now I'm gonna bring up back my device. I had stopped it. So if I do yarn Android, it's gonna go ahead and boot up. Okay, so once it boots up, you're gonna see that we have all our states being logged here. Now in the auth state, you notice that there is data, it's false, there is logged in, it's false. That means that we can quickly select it. So where is it in the app.js? So here we can select is logged in. Let me cut it out. And then I will bring it here. It's logged in. Then of course we are gonna be selecting it from auth state. So let's destructure auth state and also destructure this from auth state. So we can get is logged in from there. And now if we console log it instead, if we console log it, you see it's false and that's why we are seeing the login screens. But if we went to our initial states and let's say we changed it. So if we change this to true, you see that now it's true here and the screen is rendering the screens in the, in basically the draw navigator. Okay, so that means that we can now read from the global context from anywhere by doing use context and read any state. So now that this is done, so this is good. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I will see you in the next one where we'll start creating some UI components. So thanks and I'll talk to you soon.